Welcome to Parents Tool Talk Radio with your host, Jody Johnston Powell, licensed social worker, certified family life educator, second generation parent educator, and author of the award winning book, The Parents Tool Shop The Universal Blueprint for Building a Healthy Family. For over 25 years, Jody has been training parents and family service professionals nationwide and serving as a parenting expert to the media worldwide. Now, through the Parents Tool Talk show, Jody shares her practical advice and introduces you to other experts who can give you proven, effective advice on the issues that matter most to parents. So get ready to be informed, entertained, and enlightened as we join Jody now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this month's installment of Parents Tool Talk. Um, I'm Jody Johnston Powell, um, and I'm your host. Um, And I'm excited today that we have other speakers um, who I am really excited to introduce you here in just a minute. For those of you who do want a certificate for attending live, just type into the chat that you want a certificate. Stay involved in the chat. Um, Every five minutes or so, you know, as we're saying stuff, go ahead and type into the chat. And then at the end, type in again that you want a certificate, and that'll kind of give a time stamp that you were here through the whole time. Those of you who are watching this as a recording, pay attention during the recording, or I'm sorry, during the video, um, I'll be taking notes and we will come up with five questions that will serve as a quiz. And so after you watch the video, if you take the quiz, then you can get a certificate. But we also for this one are going to be making this just a public video that folks can watch even without getting a certificate. So so we got lots of options today, and I'm really looking forward to getting started. Um, so I want to introduce everybody to, to I don't want to say an old friend, because I'm getting to the age when I say that. People can take it more than one way. Uh, so a dear friend who I've known for a very long time, um, Eve Sullivan, um, and she's with Parent, with Parent Forum, and she's going to tell us more about that. But we go way back, and I, I have always supported what Eve does with parenting, and Eve has always been very supportive of what I do Um, and she is probably one of those folks that I think is one of the greatest advocates for parents Um, she is willing to like write those letters to the editor and speak out on behalf of parents and parenting Um, and she also is a member of National Parent Educator Network which uh, Jim who is with us here is also a member we've both been members of that for gosh well over I think 25 years I don't like saying numbers beyond about 25 or 30 because then it's obvious I color my hair, you know, so <laughs> so it's really great to have everybody here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jim's like, I don't have hair to color. <laughs> so let me go ahead and I'm going to let Eve introduce her team that she brought with her today and take us into her topic, which I'm really excited to learn about myself also. So take it away, Eve. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jody. This uh, first of all, I want to express our gratitude to you for doing the the technical end of this because it's not something I'm I'm very adept at, and uh, I don't know how much time I have to get adept. So today is is a great uh, great opportunity. I'm here today with a Parents Forum co-director Jamel Bakai, and with one of our wonderful volunteers, Pat Lothar. I will introduce myself briefly and then ask Jamal and Pat each to introduce themselves. Um, About me, I am the mother of four grown sons and grandmother to four. And they say that grandchildren are so great, you should have them first, but it doesn't work that way. And uh, the problems, the challenges, the the story (laughs) of raising my kids and bringing them successfully through adolescence led me to the field of parenting education because I got a lot of help that I didn't know I needed. So that gave me, that gave me a mission to try and bring parenting education and support to others who may know they need it, but not know where it is, or may think they don't need it, but really do. So yes, I'm an evangelist, Jody. I, I think this is is really um, close to magic stuff and I'm not done learning. So I imagine I'll learn something today. Jamal, you came on as co-director a few years ago and please introduce yourself. First of all, where are you? Hi everyone. Uh, Thank you, Eve. Thank you, Jody. Um, Thank you everyone. Um, uh, Well, I'm in Algiers, in Algeria. Uh, I uh, I have been assisting, collaborating with Eve since 2000, 
2017. Um, uh, what's my background? I, uh, I'm an educator. Uh, I'm a, the father of an 18 year old, almost 18 year olds in, in March, uh, daughter. And um, uh, here I am, I'm with even Pat, uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll give you what what we know about this approach. Eve developed uh, more than over the uh, twenty uh, five years uh, ago. Thank you, Jamal. Pat, would you introduce yourself? And we'll just put this card on the table. Pat and I have known each other for fifty years. <laughs> you said it. I, I was going to leave out the number of years, but <laughs> that's okay. Yes, we are longtime friends and. I, as Eve knows, I was brought up uh, at a time when um, the conversation and um, the discipline philosophies were very, very different. So as you can imagine in raising my two adult daughters, it was uh, quite a challenge because I realized I came to parenthood without hardly any preparation. And uh, thank you goodness, I ran into some people who kind of gave me a different way of looking at things from the way I was brought up. So running into Eve's parent forum, I love her formula for uh, facing or, or dealing with situations that parents uh, have to face, as well as situations that we face in our everyday lives outside of our homes. I think uh, it's wonderful. And um, I'm now going to be volunteering with a project that she is involved with in Arkansas. And I'm looking forward to that. Thanks, and, Okay. Um, let's get going. I know the, the time seems long at the beginning, but things move quite quickly. So what we're gonna do today, Jamal and Pat and I, is give all of you a snippet of Parents Forum. And it's the central piece which helps us convey emotional awareness. In other words, we all have feelings, they come up, they sometimes come out of our mouths. And what we try to do is take a deep breath or maybe a sip of water and stand back and sit with the feelings for a moment and then figure out how to express them. So our workshop, has a long title. It's how to tell somebody something they'd rather not hear. But fortunately, we came up with a short one, no hard feelings, really. And we know that all feelings are hard. But we find that this formula, which Pat referenced, can help you communicate hard feelings in a way that that makes things a little bit easier. So if Jody, you would put up the handout, Jamal and Pat and I will each take a turn reading some of it, and then we'll go into our role plays. It's all yours, Jamal. Hi there. Uh, thank you everyone for um, your participation. Um, so um, how to tell somebody something they'd uh, rather not hear or uh, something they'd rather not say, something um, they'd not, uh, rather not say. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, so as I said, my name is Jamal. Um, this mini session will take us uh, about 10 minutes. Um, first, we will explain the idea behind our approach to raising topics that are difficult to talk about. Then we will do two role plays, um, or rather one bad one and or good one, and then uh, a, a, another one that is good. We think that is good. So the first is uh, a rude and effective, uh, ineffective way, and the second one is uh, the charming, the charming and the effective one. For the uh, example role play, we have chosen a topic that most people have dealt with recently, which is the uh, mask wearing public. Um, um, uh, so these feelings can be uh, light to serious uh, stuff. Um, uh, 
uh, like uh, dirty dishes or um, money matters to really serious uh, stuff like uh, life transition transitions or violence in relationships. Could you scroll down a bit, Judy? Uh, Jody? And I hand it over to, to Pat, please, Pat. Okay. When we use a conversational formula that reflects the three aspects of our um, experience, we use a conversational formula that reflects the three aspects of our experience. Emotion, action, thought, uh, in the order that they usually occur. We have our feelings first, and uh, then we usually react with our behavior by doing or saying something. And then we think about it or the thought, why the behavior causes our concern, um, not why the person did what they did. This formula helps us sort through our own feelings and thoughts and express them effectively. Now, on the other side, see our feelings list. Uh, I think you'll see that in, in the handout or the packet. Avoid the phrase, I feel that, since this skips expressing feelings. And um, after all, Feelings is the key element in what we're dealing with. Uh, I feel about and because, why we feel that, the reason and because. Feel Thank in you. Oh, okay. That, that's, that's terrific. Um, as, as you can see, Pat indicated, we fill in the blanks as appropriate. And we might say, I feel confused about your leaving dishes in the sink because we like things in good order in our household. So that's just the short form. But you also make the nasty sandwich with nice bread where the middle part is that um, conversational formula, but you wrap it. You say, can we talk or is this a good time? And then at the end, you might say, thanks for listening. And sometimes it's helpful to practice with someone else before you approach the person who's been annoying you. And Pat and Jamel and I did practice this yesterday. So as Jamel indicated, we're going to take an example of behaviors that we're probably all engaged in now, and that is mask wearing and how we react to people who aren't wearing a mask. So Jody, thank you. Would you take down the screen share now so that we can see everyone's faces? There we go. So um, we're going to do this role play. I'll ask Pat to describe the situation, but um, it's gonna be hard for me as the facilitator to get Pat and Jamel to be bad behaviors because they're both such nice people. <laughs> so we'll do the role play twice, but in the first, first go round, I want them to be like really rude because that happens. People do get angry and lose their composure. So Pat, let me ask you, to describe the situation and then just go for it. You do the role play. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we're in the library. It's Saturday morning and um, I'm standing in line because I've got to pay a fine and we still have the old fashioned way of doing it. And uh, there are people behind me and suddenly someone sneezes right behind me. And, and what do you do then? Uh, I turn around and I say, sir, step back, you're too close. You're sneezing and spreading your germs all over the place. And you're not even wearing a mask that's so inconsiderate. I'm just annoyed. See, they put those stickers so you know where to stand. 
why are you so close behind me? <laughs> I love it, Pat. I almost believe that you're a mean person. <laughs> All right, Jamel, um, respond as if I'd said nothing. Just respond right away to what I, I didn't hear that. said. I didn't hear that. Excuse me, ma'am. Is that the way you speak to a person? Who do you think you are? Why why would you speak to me like that? Didn't don't you can't you see that my mask is right here? I just put it down so that I can breathe. All right, thank you, Jamel. Um, that wasn't really half as nasty as Pat. I think you were too nice, but we'll leave it at that. And then what I as the facilitator do. For, I will ask other people to comment, but first I say, Pat, how did that feel to you to speak that way to the fellow behind you in line? Well, I, I mean, if it really happened, I would feel very irritated. So I feel kind of proud of myself for telling him off, which <laughs> maybe isn't the nice way to feel, but I thought, well, I told him he should and, have been wearing that mask. So and I felt good. Exactly, exactly. And Jamel, how did you feel when the lady in front of you verbally attacked you? Can you say a feeling word? I felt da 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 about her talking to me because? Well, I can say that it was it was aggressive and it wasn't constructive. I didn't feel like uh, um, responding in a nice way or doing what she asked me to do. Um, I, I was more prompt to, to be nasty also and aggressive like her. Can you use the phrase though? Can you use, use our um, formula yes. in describing? So, I felt something about I, I, I felt, um, if I, if I were uh, to respond to her, I would say, I, I feel, I feel disrespected about um, uh, about the, the way you uh, treated me, or the, the words that you use, because um, um, uh, what can I say there? Because um, convincing someone with no, no, just a word, just a value, because courtesy is important. Courtesy is very important. Or here yes. we go. And it just from the difficulty that you may have seen Jamel have just now in finding a, a simple phrase to grab and convey the feelings, it's hard for all of us. And we've been doing this for n, n numbers of years, and it's still a challenge. So let me ask Jody or Jim or uh, let's see, Lisa or Cheryl or William, would one of you like to raise your hands and comment on how the interaction between mean Pat and mad Jamal made you feel? If you were a bystander in that situation at the library, what would you feel? Anyone who's on video, you can just put your hand up. <laughs> yeah. And not have to figure out where it is on your the controls. Button. Yeah. Those who aren't, um, maybe you can either answer in the chat or you can find the reactions have a, uh, let's see, a raise hand on it. I just raised my hand, it's under reactions. Yeah, I, uh, it's always, in, it's always very, uh, I find it very uh, unsettling when you see two people get into an argument or a tiff. It's, uh, it, you feel almost embarrassed, frankly, for the, for the, for the people involved. And I've had to, I'm a foster care worker. I've had to and I've worked at the agency for 28 years. I've had to break really bad news to people. And it's always, I'm always looking for good, good suggestions about that. You know, it's, it's hard. It's really hard, but yeah. Well, thank you for, for all of your work, certainly. And, and we're glad you're here today because there is a certain discomfort when you have feelings that are, are hard but there's also a discomfort when you witness them. I wonder if there are any other people who want to chime in. 
This is Jody. I never hesitate to chime in. <laughs> I'm always the so everybody else think about what you want to say after mine. Um, I, I found it interesting that that Pat felt justified in you know because actually him sneezing on her she probably felt disrespected so then she felt justified to be able to say something maybe that was disrespectful and then jamal uh or jamel i'm sorry if i mispronounced that because she said it in a disrespectful way then he felt justified in being disrespectful back and so this this instead of treating others how you would like to be treated i think a lot of times we treat people how we think they treated us and that it gives us an excuse to lower the standards that maybe we normally would have because they didn't so therefore you know we feel justified personally i tend to not speak up like i'm i tend to be too passive and that i don't say anything i wouldn't have said anything to him um and part of that is because having a formula ready at my mind you know or something knowing what to say i'm more likely to not say anything. I also have auditory processing. So when something happens that's shocking to me, it takes a while for my brain to process. Did that guy really just sneeze on me? <laughs> like it takes me a, a, a few seconds to a minute to even process what happened. And sometimes I'll miss my window, you know, to be able to say something because it just took me so long to kind of deal with my shock and process what just happened. Thanks, Jody. That's certainly true. We always come back we always find comebacks at, uh, too late. Yeah. Well, let's, Jim, go ahead. I find, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I find uh, lots of uh, instances like that at the post office. Uh, oh. There are, especially when a, there is a small parking lot and it's poorly marked and people go the wrong way, park on two, stri two stripes. They're all, always doing all kinds of things. Well, earlier in my life, I would have been like Pat. I would have said, uh, excuse me, I feel like uh, that you are thinking you're uh, involved here with something special because you're parking in the wrong place. You're going the wrong way. Are you new in town? Uh, I wonder if you uh, know that you're going blah, 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 blah. I wouldn't do that today. I wouldn't do that today. And I'm asking that, and as another, as a, a follow-up question to Eve and to you folks who are working in this and have been doing it for a while, do you find it more difficult to do this formula today because of the possible consequences that maybe weren't there earlier? Well, I'll I'll answer that. It's okay. difficult. It's difficult anytime. What I've found is that when I'm in the parking lot or in line at the post office or the library, and we're going to get to our second role play in a moment, Jamel and Pat, I know you'll do a great job. Um, I, I think I do what Jody talked about, the, the processing. I think I notice it. I think I'm more attentive to, um, not necessarily to insults, but to, to misbehaviors <laughs> and, and my own. I'll, I'll do things that are stupid too, but <laughs> um, I think I'm able to um, consider what might be a helpful reaction. So think, since we're looking for helpful reactions, why don't we go back to Pat and Jamal? And Pat, would you do the same situation but you're different now because you had this wonderful workshop, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> we're back in the library and somebody sneezes behind me all over my back. And um, I turn around and I see this gentleman and I say, um, oh, uh, pardon me, <laughs> you seem to have the sniffles. Uh, I'm sorry, but I feel uncomfortable with you standing so close behind me because it's so easy to spread germs and with all these viruses going around, um, people sometimes don't realize that uh, they may be infected and spreading it. I'm sure you don't want to. And I, I see you have a mask. Uh, I'm sure you pull it 
up as soon as you can put your books down. But um, thanks for or having the mask with you. And um, I hope you get a chance to put it on. Jamal, okay. you're up. Um, um, that is so embarrassing. I'm so sorry for uh, um, for this. Not only I'm going to put my mask, but I'm going to leave the <laughs> the library, and then I'm, I will be putting my mask uh, going home too. I'm so sorry. Well, let's give a round of applause to our <laughs> we're role play participants today. Deaf applause, not to make any noise. So as thank you, Jamal. Thank you, Pat. Now, as facilitator, and this was what you could do if you were leading this workshop, because I know many of you do parenting workshops. I first asked Pat, how did you feel in your as you were speaking that time? Well, that time I felt um, I, I, better. I mean, I felt um, OK. I felt sorry for him because he has a cold and, and he's arms full of books and he's got the mask around his neck. And I, I feel like he might want to put it on. But I felt better. I didn't feel uh, as hostile or angry. And um, I'm hoping that he's, it's just a quick oversight that that's what I'm thinking this time. Right. Not doing it on purpose. Right. And one thing I could suggest for everyone's benefit, but for you, Pat, too, when you were, when you got to the because part, you were talking about all the bad things, about the infection and spreading it and so on. And that's natural. But the trick to the because element in the conversational formula is to make it positive. So you might say, as you did, I feel uncomfortable about your being so close and coughing. So I feel uncomfortable about your being so close and coughing because good health is important for all of us. So you want to hold up a value that the other person can recognize, even if he doesn't give a tinker's damn about whether he gives you COVID-19 or not. All right, Jamel, how did it go the second time? How did it, Pat sound to you? I think um, just like Judy said, this um, in, the, in the first role play was, um, um, uh, the country of virtuous uh, circle, uh, a vicious circle, so that aggressivity would call aggressivity. So she was aggressive. I felt attacked, so I attacked. I attacked her too. In the second one, um, she was sweet and it was very constructive, and I felt embarrassed, like William said. And I, I listened, and then I, I, I wanted to. Um, I, I was apologizing and it was more constructive, I would say. Right, right. Thank you. So you felt more comfortable about the interaction because she was respectful. Respect was, that was, that was a theme in there, respect and concern. So those were the values. So thank you, Jamel. That's great. How about some audience reactions? Maybe William, can you imagine doing a conversation like that? I know you said you came to this for something specific. Oh, I'm always looking for uh, uh, better suggestions on how to break bad news to people or, you know, uh, that sort of thing. But uh, my daughter actually had this almost the same exact, uh, the same exact uh, experience. She was uh, working at a, uh, at a craft store and um, she'd have all sorts of people come up to her just, and during the first part of the pandemic, somebody just came up to the counter and sneezed all over her, okay? It was just, it, it was bad, you know, and you can't, you can't color it any other way that the person sneezed all over her. And she's, pr she's pretty young at the time, in her early 20s, and uh, it takes time to learn how to confront people, you know, respectfully and tactfully. You just, mm -hmm. 
you can't mouth off. You don't want to, you don't want to get them too excited, but you have to let them know, Hey, this bothers me. And she didn't, she didn't say anything at the time. And we talked about it afterward that, uh, she could have said, you know, I, I encounter a lot of people and that makes me worry because COVID-19 is, you know, all around us and I don't want to get sick and I don't, and I want to pr protect the other people in the store. You know, there are ways to, to say it, you know, that are not mean and nasty, but you're getting your point across. So, yeah, I thought about that, you know, when you brought up the example. Right. Well, thank you, William. That's, that's very affirming. And it is something that one can learn. Now, there are times when I've used it um, inappropriately. Somebody told me after I described an interaction I had, I was in a bus and I told the lady that I, I was entitled to the armrest and that I was uncomfortable with her hogging it. And she basically gave me a stink eye. And, and when I described this, somebody said to me, don't talk like that to people you don't know. She could have been carrying a gun. So <laughs> I, at, after that, I did try to modify my interactions with people that I really didn't know over things that maybe really didn't matter. <laughs> but um, thank you, William. Yeah, are there any other comments or responses? We're gonna try a little bit of uh, breakout so that we can talk one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one. -on -one. Any other yeah. comments for the group first? Lisa, perhaps? And Anne, I saw your hand up too. Lisa uh, commented in the chat, kindness goes a long way after the I just didn't want to interrupt anyone to read her. Um, and, uh, and then she also just said, it's hard to see something and say something nowadays. And I think that's what Jim was getting to. Um, I do find, though, that in the first round, Jamel would have felt more justified in doing something rash like what we're talking about, whereas the second time I think if people are at least trying to be respectful, I find that whoever's on the receiving end of that is going to be less likely so I would be more concerned about what they've got in their pocket if I'm being disrespectful than I would if I'm at least making the effort to be respectful. So, and Anne, I saw your, your uh, finger up. <laughs> yes. Um, the formula is I feel blank because blank and then something else. And I don't remember that. No, they're, they're th the, the because is at the end. Thank you, Jody. So the second page of the handout, which you will be able to get, is a whole bunch of feeling words. I feel afraid, I feel angry, I feel disgusted, I feel happy, I feel sad, I feel confused. Those are the biggies. And then the, the about is about you're standing so close, about you're not wearing a mask. And the because at the end is where you put a value or a principle. So I feel uncomfortable about your standing so close to me and coughing because good health is important for all of us. And you try to make it brief, blunt, and to the point. And, and that's why practice is helpful on this. Does Great, that, that answer your question? Yes, that helps a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Shall we try the breakout groups? It's a little bit past the half an hour. And Jody, if you can put Pat and Jamel and me each with one or two of the participants, that will be wonderful. And maybe we can spend five minutes in the breakout and just chat ourselves, chat happily together. Okay. Uh, yeah, not everybody can participate. So maybe uh, let me know if you can. If I, if, if I can step into um, my educator role for just a second here uh, to give you a compliment. And those of you who are familiar with Tool Shop and what I teach. First of all, what I really like about this formula, I and I have written entire articles about iMessages and what I don't like about iMessages. I was raised by two parent educators who used iMessages and they were able to do plenty of guilt trips and blame in spite of using iMessages. What I really like about this is it just starts with I feel and it's all about my thoughts, feelings, values, whatever. What I don't like about iMessages, the way that they're originally taught is when you do blank, I feel because. And just the when you blank in and of itself is blameful. So 
and and the other piece is that it also gets very long. I can remember as a teenager rolling my eyes at very long iMessages. Um, and so I appreciate your comment about keeping it positive and keeping it brief uh, because it really does make a difference. So I just wanted to, to say I really like this formula. <laughs> Thank um, you, Jerry. Yeah. We were, I confess that, that I was a little bit worried, and I believe Pat was as well, at the um, materials that you sent saying that iMessages had had a, a downside. So I appreciate you're seeing the upside of, of the way we present it. Yeah. And now you know why, if it, if it wasn't clearly explained in what I said. Yeah. Just so all of you know, anybody who comes on here, they'd like have to comply with what I what I uh, want to be taught in terms of the way and those of you who are research based parenting educators and know that there's a lot of information out there that is parenting information but it isn't necessarily effective um, so I just try to make sure that I screen folks before they come in and yeah that's I have seen folks use iMessages in an unhealthy way so I really appreciate this formula I think it's very helpful I'm, I'm really excited to share this with others okay so I'm going to open up the rooms and a bit, if I'm able to put a time limit on it, I'll keep track of time and then bring you all back. How much time would you like for folks to be in there? I, four or five minutes, okay. no longer than that. Okay, all right, I will, I will pay attention to the time. Good, good. All right, so we're back from our breakout rooms, Eve. Great, well, what I wanted to do um, with everyone who's on the call and Pat and Jamel is just um, take a few moments to talk about what Parents Forum is and how it works. We're all volunteer, so we have no big staff, no big office. At, before um, you do that, can I interrupt? Yeah, can can we get a report from each breakout room? Because uh, anyone who's watching it on the recording might benefit from if there's anything that you think would be helpful for others to know from your conversation, um, and then we can capture that. Because I also wasn't in any of them. So I'd kind of like to know what, what you all did in your breakout rooms. Well, I'll answer back right away. William um, Bill works with foster care, and he's going to put me in touch with his training supervisor and perhaps bring parents forum to the clients whom he serves. I appreciate that, Bill. Great. And Jamel, what, uh, anything from yours? I, I let Anne, my, her English is much, much better than mine. So please, Anne, what, what did we talk about? Oh, Anne, you are muted. muted. <laughs> there we go. Um, there go. We talked about the how I could apply this uh, when I start supervising visits again, which I will start doing tomorrow. Um, and the the I feel and about are all okay. I've I've got that, but then with the because it was kind of tough to get to. What would I say so I don't um, insult them in front of their own children? But um, I'm going to be talking with them about how I'm um, supervising, hoping to in, improve their attachment. And that I was, would say the because is because that won't improve your attachment. Well, you, if I can break in, um, I would suggest that you make a, just a very simple phrase because strong attachment is so important. In other words, rather than the negative that won't improve your attachment to say, do this because it will improve your attachment. Great. Thank you. And Pat, how about you? Oh, unmute. Unmute first. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, we had a um, very nice conversation and discovered that I'm from the place where he's just down the road worked, <laughs> worked or living, I'm not sure, in South Carolina. But um, one of the things we talked about, and in, in, it's up for discussion, was uh, the tone of voice in which something is said can determine whether it's a positive or a negative reaction. So we, we tried uh, the negative response uh, because it's so easy to spread a virus and 
to someone and not realize what you're doing versus it's so easy to spread a virus to other people without realizing it, which the voice can tell you it's a positive reaction. Now, the words aren't, but the voice is. So we talked about that. And we also talked about, uh, you know, situations that he mentioned that were in my experience, at the same place, the post office. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, gave examples of ways in which uh, he would say to people uh, in a nice way what they uh, were doing, and hopefully they would react well. So we had a kind of a smorgasbord of conversation. <laughs> That's great. I really ap follow, um, appreciate follow, the tone of voice. Following up, following up on what Jetty was saying earlier about what we used to say, we also, Pat and I found out we're almost the same age. I'm older. I'm older, but that's okay. <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> what Jody was saying, and, oh. and Pat and I both talked about the fact that when you when we were small, uh, mm -hmm. that message stuff was very strong. But it, we could use the I feel now with children. Uh, and we don't think about using it with children who are maybe misbehaving or, or could be doing better. Uh, so we talked about a little bit about how that would be effective uh, for parents to use with their children as well. Yeah, we did. I forgot. Yeah. We... That's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that because I think that's uh, for those that weren't in that discussion, that's a really great example. And I appreciate you just demonstrating the tone of voice difference because I think we all really heard your point. You know, that just the tone of voice, even, you know, the same words, but said with a different tone of voice or even emphasizing a different word can completely change the meaning of the same <laughs> sentence that you would, yeah. what, that, which therein lies the problem with emails and texts and that people can read into that <laughs> tone of voice and that kind of thing that might not be accurate. So, um, Eve, you were sure um, what I wanted to do in the in the last few minutes that we have together Jody is let people know that parents form really is quite a quite a bare bones operation we're all volunteer we're going to be launching a, a fundraiser we're calling it love and luck between February 14th and March 17th but mainly I want to let you know that we will in the middle of May take applications for licenses. We would like more sites. We have one in Arkansas with the Confess Project um, that is, is funded through grants there and one in Algeria where Jamel is, which is funded with a grant from the American Embassy there and a wonderful counseling center. So we've done Zoom trainings and whatnot, but we would like to have more sites with people who are ready, willing, and able to, to take the approach that we use and bring it to parents and, and people who work with parents. So sign up for our newsletter, please. Voices of Parents Forum, and obviously uh, stick in touch by email. And I'm putting Eve's uh, contact information in the court's course. <laughs> Um, for how to sign up for the newsletter and her contact information that's there. And Eve, you're also welcome to put that in the chat. Or oh, if you just want sure. to repeat that again, I could try to type it in there. No, I'm, I'm typing it now. Eve okay, at parentsforum.org. Great. Forum and obviously, you know, you can look us up. <laughs> this is our little brochure. You can download the brochure and share it with people in your circle. It talks about the challenges that we try to approach better, strong emotions, balance in our lives, teaching our values, and using both guidance and encouragement in, uh, in our interactions with children and with friends. Don't we all need guidance and encouragement? Absolutely. Um, and, and this will be a, um, a public, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to be a public video. So this will be something that, you know, Bill, if it's something that you want to, you know, show folks, I'm going to go ahead and put this one on the Parents Tool Shop YouTube channel, as opposed to people only having access to it if they go to the course. So that should make it easier also to spread the word, not only about what Parents Forum is doing, um, but also for folks to get um, a little bit of an introduction through this video.
Thank you so much. I am applauding you. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, yeah. thank you for that reminder um, that I said I would put the handout in. Let's see if I can do this here. Let me put the, here we go. Uh, I will go ahead and say a couple, I'm going to go ahead and put the handout up here. Why don't you all make some other final comments? And let me get this handout up there before. All right. Well, can I, can I do a plug for the book? Yes. Sure. This is our handbook and you can uh, get it on Amazon or to ask your local bookseller to order it. It's called Where the Heart Listens. And we call it a handbook for parents and their allies in a global society. So. And there we go. I'm uploading it now. So let's see if that's showing up. It should be in the chat. I see if it there. If you uh, click on it, hopefully you can save it. Or if it just opens up, then whatever your PDF reader is, then you can save it from the PDF reader. Terrific. And it's looking like folks are getting it that way. And then I also will have that and the recording and the quiz to the course. Um, and so I really want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, this will be a little bit shorter recording because I'm actually, we didn't record anything in the breakout rooms. Um, so I really want to thank everybody for coming. Um, we've got uh, two weeks from now, we will have our Foster Adoptive, the trauma-informed free webinar um, for foster adoptive kinship caregivers or anyone who's parenting children who have a trauma history. That's usually the fourth, uh, sorry, this is second, the fourth uh, Tuesday of every month, same time, same place, um, just a different link. And then next month, we will also have another Parents Tool Talk. So thank you, everybody, for coming. I want to thank so many of my fellow Family Life educators from also coming and then taking this information back to the parents that you work with. So uh, remember, if you do want a certificate, to check out in the chat. If you are active in the chat um, and attending more than 75% of it, Eve, it looks like you've got another one more one. thing. Okay. Send me a Sazy. Send me a self address stamped envelope to 144 Pemberton Street, Cambridge, 021 MA 02140, and I will send you a mini certificate. <laughs> So if My, you want an additional certificate, there we go. Thank is, you. Eve just this is your in certificate. It's all of this big. <laughs> Great. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Eve. Thanks, Eve. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Thanks. It was good to see you again, Jim. And Bill, it was great seeing you again, too. Bye -bye. So, Cheers. And Lisa, thanks again. You are always such a regular participant, so I always appreciate you attending. All right. Take care, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording. Bye-bye.